Could we please begin with a silence? Hi, I'm Chris and this is Rosie and we're the head boy and head girl for 2017 and we'd like to welcome everyone to our whole school gathering for 2017. A big welcome to all those attending their first whole school gathering for both staff and students and a welcome back to all those that have attended in the past. Today we will be reflecting on the idea of welcoming and what it means to us. There are many different ways to say welcome, but sometimes it can be something as simple as a smile. Max Eastwood once said, no matter where you come from or what language you speak, the smile is the universal welcome. We'd now like to welcome Alison Overeem to our gathering and thank her for welcoming us to country. Alison is part of the Aboriginal community and has worked with families and children from the Aboriginal community for nearly 30 years. She was formerly the director of the Aboriginal Children's Centre and is now working in community development in Laprina. Alison is passionate and committed to the learning and sharing of Aboriginal culture, as well as the celebration of Tasmanian Aboriginal culture, its people, and the rich history of our island. What a beautiful day we've all been gifted. Uh, so as the uh, young people said, my name's Alison Overeem. Ya Pulingina, which in Tasmanian Aboriginal language means hello and welcome. It's been an honour and privilege to engage with Mary Margaret and the young learners over the past nine months that I've um, had interactions with the school. I was dearly welcomed into the school environment. I was and continue to be very impressed by the respect for story of shared learning and indeed of the school community's warm taikila, which in Tasmanian Aboriginal language means heart in wanting to explore acknowledgement of our traditional owners, of the stories we all share from Milatina Ningi, which in our language means Mother Earth, and how the significance and importance of embracing Aboriginal ways of knowing can enrich all our lives, both First and Second Nations people. To the young learners I spent time with, a big Nairi Nina Tu which in Tasmanian Aboriginal language means thank you. Thank you for your open minds, your respect, and what I felt was young minds with a very strong sense of social justice. Mary Margaret, you have not just modelled, but implemented respectful, welcome engagement and conversation. As we at La Prena, a small little organisation with a big heart, welcomed you into our environment, we in turn was welcomed into yours. Therein lies for me the essence of welcome, not just a welcome to a place, but to the people, practices and stories of that space. When we truly welcome others to country, we are welcoming them in to all that is in that space. The language, the cultural practices, the traditions, the music, the song and the dance of the people who walked. Milatina Ningi. We are honouring not just the story of place as it is in the present, we are welcoming others to all that is significant of that place, both past, present and future. When we welcome, we come with an intention to share story, that's our belief in the Aboriginal community, to learn with and from each other. The theme for today is welcome, and it is so inspiring to see a school community uh, to not just want to know the name of a place, but to want to know and to learn from all that it is. For me, the welcome is enriched when we know who is welcoming you to country, whose story it is and how we share those stories. Ya Palingana, hello and welcome to the home of the Muwanina people of Lutruwita, Tasmania. I acknowledge the Palawa people as the traditional owners of the land this school sits on and honour all the stories that come with that honouring. I pay respects to elders, past, present and future and bring with me that in the welcome, a welcome to their knowledge, to their spirit and to their guidance. Aboriginal elders are keepers of Aboriginal knowledge and tradition. 
I also acknowledge the presence of other First Nations people today and welcome you all to the stories of land to sea and to sky that surround us. I acknowledge and pay respects to all First and Second Nations people here today. May the old people of Luntalangana, which for people who don't know that, that's Clark Island on the northeast, <coughs> from Putalina, which is Oyster Cove in the south, and the rich stories that come from Kunanyi, Mount Wellington that we all know, watch over this school community and all in your journey of sharing and welcoming each other. Mina, I, welcome Nina, you. May Warranta, we, Tunapri. May we Tunapri, may we know the meaning of welcome, a welcome to the stories of the land that guides and protects us all. Thank you. The Year 5 students would like to sing Coolery. The Abor Aboriginal language in this song is Gunai. The Gunai people are from Eastern Victoria. Their word for corroboree is Coolery. The translation of the Gunai words sung by Year 5 is Respect Mother Earth and our forefathers. Child, sp child spirit, stream of life. Hungry, dreaming of corroboree. Where? Get together for corroboree. Thank you.
from the High School Council for today. So I've been thinking about this topic since I was invited to speak. I was shown a reading by William Dean, a past Governor General, which made me think a lot about multiculturalism in Australia. He writes, multiculturalism means inclusiveness, not division. It's enabled us to blend the many into a pretty harmonious whole without bringing to this new land old hatreds, old prejudices, and old conflicts. It is our multiculturalism in that sense which inspires and sustains our modern Australia. Our multiculturalism is not, of course, the only thing of which Australians should be justly proud of. There is our land itself, this matchless continent, its islands, its surrounding seas. There is also the commitment to democratic government under the rule of law, which we have maintained tenaciously in times of war and in peace. Very few other nations can look back on more than a century of democratic rule of the left or right, civic or military coup or conquest unbroken. And there are all the achievements of our Australian people who are our nation. All that they are, all that they have been and all that they have done. There is clearly a lot for us to be proud of. However, there are still several challenges that we face together as a country. As William Dean notes, there is a challenge to reverse the damage we have done to our land, its rivers, its coasts, and to make good our failure as a nation to do enough to help safeguard the world environment for future generations. There is a challenge to face up to the completely unacceptable yet growing gap between the haves and the haves not in this land of the so-called fair go for all. And of course, there is the challenge to achieve true and lasting reconciliation between our indigenous peoples and the nation of which they are such a vital part. One way of working together to overcome these challenges is to focus on what we have in common. Another reading we have looked at in preparation for this gathering is by Susan Addison, who worked with Indigenous communities in Queensland. In keeping with the theme of this gathering, Susan prompts us to recognise that there is much common ground between the Quakers and the Indigenous peoples of Australia. Together we both appreciate silence, have a sense of awe for nature, care for the land practically and spiritually, aim for simplicity, and respect the whole person, including those who are different. The priority for us then, is to extend this welcome to those who are voiceless, misunderstood and disadvantaged. We need to ensure that we all do what we can to make all people feel mm -hmm. welcome. We believe we all have a responsibility to make this happen in our everyday lives. May we be a lamp for those in darkness, a home for the homeless, and servants to the world. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to talk to you today about the concept of being welcome. When we're in primary school, we're told to be welcoming to the new kid in class. Children often manage to do this fairly well. You invite the new kid to sit with you at recess ask them to play soccer with you and your friends at lunch, make a space for them in your group. However, looking around the world today, we can see whole nations struggling with this concept of welcoming others. You could argue there are larger issues at play here, issues of national security and politics. But when it comes down to it, immigration policies that entail banning citizens from entire nations or involve lifetime bans on asylum seekers who have ever tried to enter Australia by boat, seem more about pandering to well-off but frightened populations 
determined to protect what's theirs than any legitimate form of border protection. These policies reflect a serious lack of welcome in our society for those we see as being different. As much as I may like to, I cannot change Trump's immigration policies or even Australia's, although we can certainly try. But what we do have control over is our school community right here. I'm sure there are some times we've all felt unwelcome at school. And for most of us, I hope there are times we've never felt more welcome and included than when surrounded by this community. The willingness to welcome new faces, new ideas and new challenges is what makes a community thrive. This openness is something that I have experienced at Friends and I hope all of you have as well. This year, I hope we can all work together to ensure that our school remains an open, accepting, diverse and welcoming place. By developing these characteristics and attitudes when we're young, we can hope to move the wall. We can hope to move the world towards a more inclusive and tolerant and accepting place. In being welcoming now, you are doing more than just being nice to the new kid or the person who stands on the edge of your group wanting to join. You are developing lifelong patterns, habits and awarenesses of others that I hope we can hold on to for the rest of our lives. I hope we can bring these values into our interactions with the wider world and ultimately help make our whole nation a more welcoming place. Welcome to this school year, everyone. I hope it's a good one. We now have Dwayne Everett-Smith to talk to us. Dwayne is a Tasmanian Aboriginal singer who has toured nationally and internationally. He's descended from the Aboriginal community of Cape Barren Island and the Palawa people. His music is strongly influenced by his heritage, which he would like to share with us today. Thank you very much. Uh, I just firstly would like to say um, how inspirational your talks have been so far. And it's so great to, uh, you know, my, gra my grandmother, my great-grandmother, my grandfather have fought for years to teach these messages. And it's good to see that um, there's a time and place that my, my great-grandmother, Isabel Beaton, would have loved to hear the words coming out of these young people's mouths. So uh, can we please give them a big round of applause? In Tasmania, um, we had nine different nations, or effectively countries. Within those nine nations, we had 13 different languages just here in Tasmania. Um, upon European, European settlement, we lost that. And um, if it wasn't for the British and the French recording our language, we wouldn't have been able to revive our language and speak something that we know that's been here for 40,000 years. Um, so the language that we sing today, called Palawakani, it means Aboriginal talk, um, is a combination of 13 traditional languages that have been revived through this documentation. And this song that I'm going to sing for you today is a song that has that um, came from the revive from our language coming back, and is the first song to be kind of shared within our community since the last recordings of Fanny Cochran Smith. So this song is called Mila Dina Nika Manamapli. But to make it easy for you guys, you guys can call it Mila, okay? <laughs> Yeah. 
for your powerful words and your wonderful music. I would now like to acknowledge and pay respect to the stories and culture of the Muanita people. One such story is about to be told to us by year two students. It is told in the form of a poem called Mutton Birding at Little Dog by Karen Brown. It recounts the journey to mutton bird rookeries, a tradition that Tasmanian Aboriginal people have undertaken for hundreds of years. Year two students will read the poem and use mime to enhance the action and emotion of these memories. Mutton Birding at Little Dog by Karen Brown. I remember helping my dad stack the wood onto the truck so that we could take it down to Little Dog. When the boat came, everything went onto it. Wood, drums, bedding, food, kids, Parents, for that short but long trip between the islands to Little Dog. I remember helping, I remember that first sight of Little Dog, the tussocks waving in the wind, the beach, the sheds, that first night out in the rookery hearing the cries of chicks calling to their parents, watching the old birds come into land, smell from the rookery of oil and birds. I remember playing in the pluck house with my brothers and sisters, fairies flying out the door and up our noses. I remember standing on the point with my fishing line catching mullet for tea that night, covered in flour, cooked in the pan, with chips fried in mutton bird fat. I remember mum's doughnuts, stews, stuck up bird, fried birds, stuffed and baked birds, eat, eaten at every meal, smoke break, dinner time, tea time, even now, just thinking about it makes me drool. I remember Easter time. Grandfather and Granny visiting from Lady Baron with eggs covered in pretty paper. I remember leaving Little Dog when birding ended, looking forward to going home, but already missing the island. I remember being there.
Thank you to the Year 2s for that incredible performance. We'd now like to invite the high school band Turbo Pigeon to the stage to perform Bootleg Rascal. I keep on running down the same road And the people keep on coming down to my show All the king's men brave And all the burnt bridges Couldn't nobody put a butter back together again I keep falling down the same stairs With the city with a nitty gritty plan to brainwash all my hairs Free falling through this light show Free falling true and slow Falling won't stop me no more Cause I'm a bootleg or They keep coming straight in our road And I know that she would love it to watch me explode I'm not clinically insane but I am tormented Couldn't body would've put her back together again We keep floating round the same ideas And I hope she started to find out It wasn't here Free falling through this light show Free falling true and slow Free falling won't stop me no more Cause I'm a bootlegger Thanks guys, it was terrific.
My name is Nelson File, as I think most of you know, and I'm the principal of the Friends School. I'd like to thank, especially today, Allison and Dwayne for joining us at this whole school gathering. Our year two, year two students who did such a lovely job with the Mutton Bird poem, our year five students with the songs, and our student speakers today. The Religious Society of Friends, or Quakers, have a long history of interaction with First Peoples. The earliest Quakers to Tasmania came here because they had heard of the mistreatment of the First Nations people in Tasmania and the mistreatment of the convicts that were sent here early on. They were sent by London Yearly Meeting to bear witness and report back to London Yearly Meeting the treatment that they saw. George Washington Walker and James Backhouse did exactly that. Unfortunately, it did not change the treatment of what happened to Aboriginals here in Tasmania in the 1830s. Prior to that, when Quakers first moved to the New World and set up the colony of Pennsylvania, the First Nations people in that region were called the Leni Lenape. I was born on Leni Lenape land. My family has resided there for nearly 350 years. Quakers treated the First Nations people in ways that other colonists did not with a sense of equality and respect because they saw that of God within everyone. If we take that message as the core message, how can we not treat others as equals if upon first meeting someone we recognize that of God within them and they recognize that of God within us? I'd like to thank everyone again for coming today. We'll just finish with a moment of silence.